Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick Game Telecom video, we're going to be discussing one of the most requested tech stories of the past few days, and that is AMD's collaboration with a Chinese console manufacturer. Now, this collaboration is very interesting for a couple of reasons. Not only do we see a very large APU based on the Zen architecture along with Vega, but it also provides exciting insights to perhaps what we're going to be seeing as a joint collaboration between AMD and Sony, along with, of course, Microsoft into the next generation of systems. So what are we actually referring to here? Well, a company in China, Songshang Sabor, have created a platform which will be very interesting for a couple of different reasons. The first is that we see a traditional Windows-based platform, and then later on it will shift into a more customized operating system to be more console-like. So the Windows-based system will launch next month, and then later this year, there's not a specific release window yet, we will see a custom operating system console. Now, details on some areas are still somewhat thin on the ground, but we can still start to make some educated guesses and we can do some in-depth analysis on the specifications and why it is so exciting. So, let's start over the basic specifications of the system. So, as I mentioned, it is using the Zen processor architecture. Four cores, eight threads, that's running at three gigahertz for the peak frequency. It is using AMD's Vega architecture running at 1300 megahertz, 1536 shaders total over 24 compute units. And this means that it has just a smidgen, 3.99 teflops of GPU performance. So just a smidgen under four teraflops. And to put that into some level of comparison, we have the PS4 Pro, which of course puts out 4.2 teflops of GPU performance. In addition to that, we see eight gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. So eight gigabytes of GDDR5. We don't have information regarding the actual bus width. Although it's very likely it is actually going to be a 256 bit bus, simply given the amount of memory on the system. And of course, that would be quite simple for them to put out an ample amount of bandwidth. So this is essentially a ramped up version of the Ryzen 2400 uh, APU. So if we were to quickly go over it versus the 2400G, which has once again, four cores, eight threads, the same as the Sabor, but it is running at a slower clock speed. It's three gigahertz versus 3.8 gigahertz. Both are using Vega for the GPU architecture. But the key difference here is the number of streaming processors, 1536 versus just 704, and also 50 megahertz on the actual frequency of the GPU. Another key characteristic that we can use to separate these is the memory. We have the uh, APUs for the 2400G and its smaller brother, which utilize DDR4. Obviously DDR4 puts out a lot less memory bandwidth than GDDR5. And that is one of the reasons that AMD right now at least cannot really scale up the APUs. If they were to do that, it's going to be memory bandwidth constrained. So in terms of raw GPU performance then, we are certainly looking at a part which is probably going to be putting out slightly less performance than let's say a GTX 1060. And once again, it, it does fall slightly behind that of the PS4 Pro. We're looking at 4.2 versus 4 teflops. But it's not that much of a difference. The PS4 Pro GPU is a souped up version of the original PS4 GPU. And of course, this system is considerably slower than that of the Xbox One X, which puts out 60 flops. But a key characteristic is the CPU. AMD Jaguars in both the PS4, the PS4 Pro, along with arch rival Microsoft Xbox and Xbox One X and Xbox One, run uh, considerably slower. For one, we're looking at uh, 1.6 gigahertz up to 2.3 gigahertz. But you also have the major difference, which is IPC. Zen is considerably more powerful. I wouldn't be surprised, at least in theory from the CPU side of things, if we could see games running up to 60 FPS. It really comes down to the level of GPU performance. This system is just not going to be capable of, let's say, putting out 4K games. We also have full support for features such as Rapid Pack Math and AMD's Adrenaline software. In short, this is going to be a very customizable, very powerful chip. What's most interesting to me isn't just the Sabor console. While it is a very cool piece of hardware, most likely, when we see it finally released, I think it does once again prove that 
the most logical way for both Microsoft and Sony to go would be the APU with the Zen based processor. And it probably also reinforces the clock speeds that we're going to be seeing out of the, C uh, out of the CPU side of things at the very least. My personal guess is that we are going to be looking at a 4-core, 8-thread processor. After all then, with SMT and 4 cores at running at around hmm, 3 to 3.2 gigahertz, depending on the actual process that these things are produced on, we are looking at a fairly decent amount of CPU performance. Another possibility, of course, is they could just ramp up the core count and not go with uh, SMT. Well, they could go with 16 threads. My issue with 16 threads is it's just an awful lot of work for the programmers. So my personal opinion is we're going to be looking at between 8 and 12 threads. It's also possible, for example, we could see a 6-core configuration Zen for the APU as well, for both the PS5 and the next generation Xbox. But I think almost certainly this type of APU is going to be a good indicator of the type of performance that we're going to be seeing for the next generation of systems from both Sony and Microsoft. And this is, of course, even further reinforced when you see that the PS5 uh, has had numerous reports which tells us it's going to be using the Zen architecture anyway, along with Navi. But my personal opinion is that the next generation of consoles are going to lean a lot heavier on the CPU. After all, even Phil Spencer himself went on record and said that things were not balanced with the Xbox One and Xbox One X. They were much more GPU dependent. Therefore, even the Xbox One X, which had a significant uh, uptick in CPU performance, we're looking at 1.75 to 2.3 gigahertz on the AMD Jaguar CPU, and we also see the PLUS version, although details of the exact customizations that Microsoft stuffed into the Jaguar processor are somewhat thin on the ground. There are some details which we've gone over a couple of times, so I don't want to stuff the video too much with that. But the bottom line is that the Xbox One X and the original Xbox, along with, of course, the PlayStation systems, were just not that powerful when it came to the CPU. A lot of the work came to the GPU. So, most likely, games of the future, when it comes to the PC, are probably going to heavily rely on the CPU. And, of course, they're going to continue to be multi-threaded. We can almost be assured that those games, of course, are going to remain back with the compatible from the PlayStation 5, probably going to be able to run PS4 games. Although Sony are somewhat sketchy when it comes to backwards compatibility, let's be honest. But Microsoft, it's almost a surefire bet. So, what does all of this mean for you if you're... Uh, a PC gamer. Well, basically the bottom line is I suspect that the time of a 4-core processor being enough to put out the performance that is enough for modern games is probably going to come to an end when the next generation of systems are finally here. I suspect that we're going to see an instance where memory usage goes up even further, memory bandwidth particularly on the CPU becomes even more critical, and I wouldn't also be surprised if more work as a whole goes to the CPU. But also, for games, it could be really cool as well. Game worlds could get bigger. We can have more work put on them in terms of the CPU side of things. So perhaps draw distances could go up. Perhaps artificial intelligence could increase. Perhaps we could see higher levels of detail after all. While the GPU is certainly responsible for drawing stuff on screen, the CPU is the thing that's issuing a disc, uh, commands to the GPU. So ultimately, when the CPU is more powerful, this is going to be uh, a very interesting scenario and furthermore and probably my last point of the video is that if we were to look at assassin's creed we all remember assassin's creed unity right after all despite the fact that everyone really focused on the hilarious glitches with the mm, questionable looking faces what was really interesting to me as a tech enthusiast was the fact that the ps4 at the time fell behind the Xbox quite frequently in frame rate. In fact, we actually did our own frame rate analysis on Assassin's Creed. And yes, the Xbox would frequently pull ahead of the PlayStation when it came to frame rate. And why was that? Well, ultimately it was because the uh, Xbox One had a faster CPU. This was obviously an indicator that developers at the time of when Assassin's Creed was originally being developed had thought that the PS4 and probably the Xbox One would have faster CPUs. Not necessarily more powerful in terms of the actual architecture necessarily, but probably were clocked at higher frequencies, and therefore subsequent patches would actually reduce crowd densities. And since then, we've actually seen Ubisoft pull back on levels of detail in the open world. We see less dense crowds, and one of the reasons behind that 
is, of course, because it puts work, less work on the CPU. So it's going to be really cool to see all of this. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.